Hey everybody, our good friend John from Arkansas asked me a very interesting question on my last video and I figured let me take a shot and try to answer it. So if you look at this case you'll notice that they have some stripes in the design. It's only in the center part, it's not on the doors or the door that I just showed you on this side. And I have to think about how am I going to do that? So I did a little experiment. I took a piece of the fabric and I painted it with the uh, shellac and then I did this really quick so it's not perfectly neat but I used some blue painters tape made sure I had it stuck very well and I applied very lightly some of this uh, Varathane stain and poly with cherry and um, dries in like two seconds and um, I think I'm going to get away with this so what I'll have to do is I'll have to cut the piece that I'm going to use here stain it with the with the shellac before I glue it which is going to be interesting actually I don't even think I have to do that I could actually glue it and then, um, and then what I'll do, I'll have to put tape, and I'll have to make the pinstripes, and I'll have to carefully put some stripes down here. And if it's not perfect, it's okay, no big deal. But at least I'm going to get some of the design. I also want to figure out what this logo really looks like. It's hard for me to see it because it's, it's, it's tattered. I'm sure I could find it on the internet and figure out a way to do that too. So, uh, so John, um, that's how we're going to handle the stripe. It actually works pretty good, I think. We shall see. Actually, it's darker here, here, here. So um, it should be pretty easy to do. We shall see what happens. All right, let's see what else we got. So one last recap. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to use these stripes. We'll make them nice and neat, much more even than I did here. And we're going to put multiple stripes across here. That's going to be the next piece I work on. It's going to look pretty good. Just got to make sure these are neater. What else we have here? Let's see. So what we have here is a Halicrafters S19R Sky Buddy. It's a version 2 and it was made in 1939 and this was sent to me by a very good friend and one of my subscribers. I'm not going to mention who but it's a, but I really do appreciate it. This is a, um, a four band radio I believe. I never had one of these uh, shortwave radios but I do now and this one has been fully restored let's turn it on and see what it looks like it's a beautiful radio this is a stainless steel it's been restored perfectly and it has a send and receive button it has band select one through four it has a BFO button which I don't know what that is yet band something ABC control AC on and off pitch and this is the uh, the fine tune, I guess is what you call that, the band band spread. That's what it's called. So, um, for example, I have it tuned into my home radio station, which is 800. And as I turn this band spread, the signal gets weaker and less weak. And there's no antenna connected to this at the moment. This thing does a pretty darn good job without an antenna. But this is a really, really nice piece of equipment and um, very futuristic for 1939. And um, I just want to say how appreciative I am to have this. Um, actually, it's the same year my father was born, so it's actually extra special for me. So um, to the person that sent this to me, you know who you are. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. I'm going to cherish this one. This is a beautiful piece of equipment. Let's take a look around the back beautiful job in here inside all chrome plated transformer uh, output transformer I think that is or maybe that's the transformer is chrome plated and just immaculate inside beautiful beautiful job so I'll just leave it again with a simple thank you for this I really really appreciate it all right here's an interesting project that we have coming up too it's a silver tone 7079 and it's a portable radio it's an All-American 5, which is both AC and battery powered. And um, you'll see this has a really nice little little case about the size of a lunchbox. And it's got this little flap that comes up. And this is where your volume and your tuning um, sliders come in. And you've got your dial right there. Um, this particular one, there's two actually two models of this. So there's the, um, this, let's see, this is the... 101620 as notated right there 
And then there's another one, which is a 101636. And the reason why I know that I have this top one is because of that rectifier tube right there, which is this tube right here. Um, <clears throat> I've powered it up with the dim bulb tester, and it doesn't power up, no tubes light. So um, I did check the on-off switches, which is right here, and it's good. So I'm guessing that I have a bad rectifier tube. And, yeah, you know, bad rectifier tube means that something underneath is shorted out. Let's take a quick look underneath, and you'll see it's relatively simple, um, compact. So um, right there is the rectifier tube, and you'll see that uh, not much there. So I'll have to probably rip all this out and rewire it. There's not a lot of wires going on here. Check the coils. Check all those resistors. Check the electrolytic cap, which I'm sure is bad. This is from 1941. And uh, see if I can get this working. One thing that it does have, which is interesting, um, it has this little wire coming out here, which goes to the battery if you had one. And you're supposed to insert the plug right in there when you're using the battery. So it shorts it out so you're not, um, so it switches the circuit so it knows where its juice is coming from. So this will be a project that I work on on this side. It has a permanent magnet speaker and uh, not a lot coming out of this one unusual. Um, so I'll play with this one and put it in this case and you know this case I don't think I'm going to redo this case although if you take a look here it looks like someone may have recovered it at some point. It's got like this uh, fake rawhide stuff going around it and then it's got this uh, Tolex and it looks like it has a built-in antenna right there which is good. I'll have to see. Maybe I'll cover this one again. We'll see. So, anyway, that's the update on this. This will be one of my projects coming up. This is Ron.